Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to set up a FOSCAM C1 so that it's a little bit more private and under your control. Um, there's two steps to this. Setting up on Safari is you need to install plugin and the second step is getting the FTP server running. So I hope you can follow on. Hey guys, let me try to explain what the problem with, with the, the FOSCAM defaults. So this is my little diagram here. So by default, FOSCAM P2P is enabled. And what is P2P? It's a sort of like a fancy word for tunneling out of your own network. So you you have your sorry your own home network here, and P2P tunnels to a FOSCAM server. So you can you know launch your FOSCAM app and and get to your to your images on your on your home network. And that's quite a practical method of doing it. I I use a similar method on my own services. But the problem I have is this is this um, FOSCAM ser server. It's a third party, and when when a tunnel is open, that means that they can get into your network at any time. It does seem a bit invasive to me. Um, obviously, if someone hacks the FOSCAM server, they can just go willy nilly in your home network. I mean, I I know ne no, there's no such thing as a secure network anymore. But I'm just uh, you know trying to limit this I mean I just personally don't like the fact that they have a tunnel open on, on my connection it's not also it's, maybe it's not very efficient either so um, <clears throat> FOSCAM do offer an alternative to make the FOSCAM app work and that method is called UPnP and again that has some problems because when you enable UPnP you're allowing the FOSCAM to listen onto several ports on your on your IP, and that's not very secure because anyone sort of like probing your IP can see the ports open, and then start doing sort of brute force password attacks and such and so forth. Um, and yeah, it's I I I don't really like it, but obviously when you have the ports open, you can configure your your FOSCAM app. Sorry, on this side to dial through the internet back to your IP, and again, this doesn't this method doesn't really work um, unless you have a static IP or you run some sort of dynamic DNS service, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, so I don't really like I don't really like the I don't like the PTP method. I don't like I don't like this method. So I've come up with my own sort of solution. I've kind of done this on my previous webcams, but to, to be honest, setting this up on the FOSCAM was a bit of a challenge. So now um, I've configured uh, my, my FOSCAM C1 to uh, not disable uh, its PTP by default. Uh, disable its, well, UMPP is disabled by default. So basically it doesn't dial out, it doesn't do anything uh, on, on the external network. And except now I've configured it to push. It just pushes to my FTP server pushes to my FTP server and then um, and then the the videos are converted into MP4 and put in this sort of directory structure so I can look at them. I think it's really quite simple and um, let me get on to the FTP server next. Okay and my FTP server is available on GitHub and it's really quite simple. I set up some user accounts. I have actually several but this is just the one that I'm going to configure the FOSCAM with username password of my FTP server and then I build it go make build and it basically runs an FTP server for me but the clever things are and um, as you can maybe see in the script well, this sets up the users it, it runs FTP server as well as this move script and the move script basically takes incoming M um, MKV files which FOSCAM records by default and converts it to MP4 files and then dumps it into a directory. Um, the directory that I configured with this one is var oh, mount tb cam. So if I show you my cam directory, I have um, stuff coming in from a couple of uh, webcams and they're arranged in that year, month, day um, uh, sort of format. Uh, let me just show you what the end result looks like. Uh, the end result looks like something like this. And 
I have a test video. So basically, you have a great sort of record of <laughs> this is that's me. Um, you have a great record of all the the sort of motion detected stuff from your webcam. It's all nicely sorted in a day by day in a directory. Um, the th it's up to you how you how you protect um, your the output web directory. I mean, you can serve it in all sorts of different ways. I I keep uh, indexes off. So that, and then I run a little script to um, to basically email me when there's some sort of when I want to be notified about something. So um, yeah, if any questions about this FTP service, please let me know. I might even set it up for people, or set up some sort of Amazon AMI so so people can get it. At. And let me see, and that's that's the uh, GitHub URL. Now the tricky part. The tricky part is configuring these FTP credentials with your FOSCAM C1. It does involve a few painful steps, but once the set, once it's set up, you're all good. You have pretty you have a good secure setup. First things first is the IP port is 88. By the way, not 80. It's not really shown well in Safari and. You have to install a plugin to get this far. Now we have to just set up the username and password. You have to change it. Okay, what am I doing here? I recorded this late last night and now I'm doing a voiceover. Oh, first things first is just is to disable the default PTP. Oh, we need to set up time so that the sort of timestamps on the top left corner are right. I'm setting it up for Singapore or Kuala Lumpur. Oh yeah, once you disable PTP, I'll oh, so to re-log in. Oh, there's me. Okay, plus eight hours. You can do it. Change the um, name of the camera. Okay, this is where you put the IP of your FTP server. I'm not too sure why, but it only seems to work when it's in port mode. Test, and it's successful. I've had issues where it just didn't work before, and I had to sort of do a factory reset. No idea why. Okay, now we're setting up the um, storage rotation. I don't understand that error, but anyway, uh, you can ignore it, like I did. Okay, this is the important thing. So I'm turning a recording. I'm not actually um, saving the individual sort of image snapshots, because I find the videos just a lot easier. I think that's basically it. Yeah. I think the next thing is to sort of start logging your FTP server just to make sure um, files are being put there correctly. Okay, one final video to show how to to monitor your, your Docker FTP service instance. You run make HH with exec, exec shell in your Docker instance then you, in your var log, you just tail your uh, your vstftpd log, and then here you can test that uh, your foscam is indeed uploading your FTP images or, or or movies correctly, and then once that's all set up, you're done. Sanity somewhat accomplished. I hope you found this useful. Please subscribe and give a big thumbs up if you found this useful. And do ask any questions and I'm happy to answer.